you are watching Kolsky One. Like, share, and subscribe. Hi, welcome back to Kolsky One. So, by the title of today's video, you probably know what we're going to talk about digital or analog. Which way should you go if you get into the hobby from the starting point now? The advantages and disadvantages of digital or analog, the other way around, and obviously what would I do if I was starting today. So if I was starting today I'd probably go straight down the road of digital um, for reasons I'll explain later but it's not quite that straightforward is it because there's a massive cost implication. So these are the DJI system you don't need this you can take them out of the equation but you do need these. I think these still retail at 549 and then that's with standard um, Receivers on it. You don't. Standard receivers are absolutely fine. By the way, I'm not saying for one minute you need to buy them. You don't. But what you will need to do if you just want to have one pair of goggles is then have your module on the side or on the front. Um, I've got mine on the side today, but I'll show you. I've got a video coming up shortly of the Digidapter, which is a UK branded product with a Foxy a Wildfire on the front. That's a separate video. So what I'm going to do, what I want to show you today is, I just wanted one pair of goggles now, so I did what I sold my OLEDs I had. For two re the one biggest reason, the biggest problem I have now with other goggles is they weren't used to the size of the view from the DJI. Forget the quality a minute, I've got used to that size of that view. And my eyes aren't the best in the world, but with this, I don't need to wear glasses with them, I don't need corrective anything in there. It's just perfect. So that's why I'm now sort of like stuck flying this way. I do still fly analog because I have a true D on the side of this, which isn't the best in the world. It's quite a cheap uh, adapter. I don't think it's that good. Quite a good receiver. But I still have analog quads. So the biggest obviously problem is the fact that these are £549 and then an air unit is 175 still. And if you buy a Cadix Vista I think they're 128 or a Cadix Nebula which is around 100 but that's nowhere near good enough in the camera. You may as well stick with a good pair of OLED goggles and a good Cadix and Mattel if you're going to do that. So let's talk about the cheapest way of doing it to get good quality and that is a Vista which is £128-ish. You can't record to the air unit which makes you might make you go, which it did at first to me, so I don't want one of them. But here's the thing, and this is why I've got them in a few quads now, because of the fact that some of the quads I have, or quite a few quads I have, have popped in shop. They're not cinematic ones. The freestyle. So if I've got props in shot, I'm not that bothered about having the air unit recording it anyway, because there's a good chance I've got a GoPro on the top of it, or um, a camera like a GoPro. I've can e I can either put my GoPro out on the top, or my um, DJI Action. So I'm not that bothered about having an air unit at that point. It still records to my goggles, it's exactly the same way, and it still sets up exactly the same way. You can still do the mod to have, to increase your 25 milliwatt um, settings, if you're in the UK you can still set them to 712, whatever you want to go to, I wouldn't recommend going to 1200, I'd recommend never going above 7, um, but anyway that's by the by. So we've, so that's the first thing, but to get to that I've spent £128 and I've had to modify a quad I already own, if, unless I want to go buy a bike and fly, unless I want to go start again. Now with a Caddy Fist you can mod quite a few of what you own so there's quite easy ways of doing it on certain stuff I've got some videos coming up I've made my own Titan 7 inch iFlight with stuff I already had and put in the um, the Vista in was really easy for me to do it that way but I've still got 100 and let's say I've got a quad that's already can take it but I've got 128 quid and then I've built I've got the goggles at another 550 and I'm all of a sudden hitting that £700 mark, or I don't know, is that $850, but I'm right into a lot of money. And if I want to buy this, which I, this is a quite recent acquisition for me, and the reason I bought this is because I, A, I like it, but B, the most important reason I bought it is because I don't need to buy receivers. So I don't need an XM Plus on this, I get better range out of this, and the binding sequence is as simple as pressing the bind button on the air unit or the Vista, holding down record, that button and press it in that wheel and it binds and it's as simple as that and it's bound forever I don't need to mess around changing my models or anything I just take the drone out I want to fly and turn it on that's why I bought it but then you've got another £300 I bought this second hand but you've got another £300 and all of a sudden these prices are rocketing through the roof 
But what do you get for your 300 pound? What you get is a different experience. You get to fly with superb quality visuals. So what you see out of the goggles is what the air unit, um, sorry, is virtually what the air unit records. It's a 720p version. But you can obviously watch the recorded footage back and it looks superb. You don't get the overlay of the OSD on there, which is another thing to discuss because OSD has to be set up in a different way and it doesn't overlay onto your, you can see it in your goggles but it doesn't overlay onto your video footage. Again, a lot of people like the OSD on, it doesn't bother me in the slightest but they like having that on the front. So we're into a lot of money but we've got really good quality. It looks fantastic, the range is great, the breakup's next to none and if you're running it at 700 milliwatts you've got fantastic you can have it 25 megabits per second or 50 megabits per second. 50 megabits per second, the footage looks amazing through your goggles and the recording's going to look amazing. So, why would you not buy it then? Because of the fact it's we're looking at probably then for one quad and that's converting your own. And to do all this, we're probably looking at best part £900. Or we're probably looking at £1,000 if we bought everything. A lot of money. Whether I can go out and log by a pair of OLEDs, um, let's not go down the road of fat shites because you're into stupid money again. So let's say I bought some uh, Skyzone O3Os, uh, Z03Os, and they're OLED. Yeah, so, and they're around £330 at the minute. Sorry about that. They're around £330 at the minute if I buy them from Banggood. And then I've got OLED technology. And I can fly any quad that I already own. So the analogue quad that I already own, I haven't had to spend any money. And I've got a really nice pair of goggles, I've got a really nice picture. And I can record through that. So what's the difference? Well the difference is a bit like chopping trees really. There's loads of videos about you can watch. I'm not going to do a comparison video, because they're massive. There's loads of them, but the breakup's far less, the quality's far better, the range is much improved. The latency's really low. People say there'll be high latency, there isn't. Big Bad DJI have come and taken the hobby. Have they? Well they haven't. What they've done is left the hobby open for other people to now come in with DJI to get DJI products. I'm surprised they let Cadix do what they're doing and I'm surprised they've let Yashin do what they're doing because Yashin now make a camera. So analog can be bought for cheap and hopefully if that's... I've seen the bike frost and it I wasn't that impressed with it, but it was a pre-production unit. Let's say they get that bike frost right and you can use the original equipment you've got. But you don't have to have this silly screen. And you don't even need to have all the other plugs going into stuff. That would be a solution, and a great solution. And DJI might then have some competition, but at the minute, they haven't. And when this came out, I, I'm a DJ, I like DJI anyway, so I don't have a problem. I don't bother about politics of what happened and the big bad corporate companies, all I care about is can I fly with it and do it like the image it gives me. If it's yes, I'll buy it. It's, a, it's the end of the day, that's it, I don't care about the politics with it. But, but they're the only people now in the market. There's no competition for them. And because of that, they'll keep doing it. A lot of people I didn't expect to convert, that you see on YouTube, have converted already in the winter. They, they fly very much, mainly, DJI Air. I'll be totally honest with you, I can't see ever buying another drone that, hasn't got, that isn't a DJI Air unit in it. I'll never probably do a build that hasn't got a DJI Air unit or a Vista in it. Because it's not the way I want to go anymore. I'm happy with this setup, if something happens to the I'll just go back and stick an XM Plus in and fly it with a jumper. Not a problem. Remember, that's something you must remember as well. You don't need to buy the DJI controller. You can just use the goggles you've got with your own can transmitter and just do it that way. The goggles only need a, power, a positive and negative supply to work. So that air unit just needs a positive and negative to give you an image back to these goggles. That's it. The other thing you're doing is connecting up two, two wires which will give you your control from the unit uh, your Sorry, I can't remember what I'm saying. I can't remember the word for it. It'll give you OSD on screen and show you what's happening. The OSD, as I said before, isn't quite as like it is on beta flight and you can't record it. But basically, that's how simple it is to use. So forget that, you don't need one of those. You can just buy that. But the problem is, that's still the cost wise. Will these come down in price? I'd imagine they probably will. Will a, a Unit 2 come out? Well, I've seen a lot of people saying, when will it come out? I keep seeing it's a most 
funny thing you read on the forums. Every day someone asks a question, does anybody know when the DJI Google 2 are coming out? Why would you make them? You've no competition. Why would you spend money on technology or raise a new product that could kill the product you've got when there's absolutely no competition? So, bit of a ramble. But the point of the video is that analogue is not dead. Not by any stretch of the imagination. But it's getting that way. Thanks ever so much for watching. Have a fantastic day. Don't forget, like, share and subscribe.